Hey guys, Zerka here and welcome back to our Mill Career Mode series and as you can see we start off and we get a job offer again from another national team that we don't really care about uh, in Bolivia. We go into our first game of the episode uh, against Wigan in the Premier League and you can see we've handed the debut uh, to Jed Steer, our new goalkeeper signing that we got. Uh, he is a 77 rated goalkeeper uh, that we got from Norwich, um, signing for 5 million plus Gabriel. Uh, so it's pretty expensive signing to be honest, uh, so it's a pretty risky signing as well because he he's not a proven goalkeeper, I haven't really seen him uh, signed in other people's career modes and I'm not sure if he's a player that has a lot of growth uh, like on on, the, on these FIFA websites to show different players' growths either. So it's a bit of a risky signing but it's a signing that I feel that we need, uh, as, both, as most of you guys feel we need as well because those of you guys have said to sign a new goalkeeper for ages because uh, Cragno it will uh, actually get better but it will get better at a later age because goalkeepers do tend to grow and uh, peak at a later age than normal players. Um, so we're going against a game against Wigan and it's a game that we definitely need to win especially with the form that we're in. Uh, I went into this game very confident uh, it's like that we'd actually win especially with Jed steering goal now I was hoping that uh, his new or his ability should be able to keep us these clean sheets we haven't been really been keeping in the past. Um, we started very well. Redmond scored a goal here in the 27th minute. Nice uh, play across the pitch, over from all across the players, over to Redmond eventually. And he slots that into that bottom corner there to make it 1-0. Uh, Piazan then picks up the ball here in the 40th minute, cuts inside and then has a shot. But that is just tipped wide by the goalkeeper. And the goalkeeper had a really, really good half to be fair. He did save a lot of stuff and kept them in the game. Now into the second half now and Dicko down the right hand side for Wigan uh, has the ball. And he toys, toys around a bit, gets past the defender and then again crosses it in. And uh, nearly, nearly they score there, but that goes narrowly wide. Um, Ake picks the ball here, plays it to Benzia. There's a lot of gap, uh, a lot of space here on the right hand side for Redmond. Redmond gets into that space, uh, shoots, and that goes what I, uh, actually over. It should have gone in. Um, he should have crossed it to be fair, even because uh, that's definitely a chance wasted. But anyway, Piazon gets the ball here in the 60th minute. Again, running down the right hand side, he cuts in with that nice body feint there and shoots, and that goes wide again. And this is this game is turning into a game where we could have been five or six new up by now, and it just wasn't happening for us. Um, I hit the post there, and then Jed Steer toying around a bit here. And a bit of a misconfusion between the defender and the goalkeeper. But luckily, we cleared it. But then the ball comes back to him. And uh, Kone gets the ball, plays it to uh, Jufra, I think his name is. And he scores uh, and slots that into that bottom left-hand corner there. And that makes it 1-0. And they grab their equaliser. And that's the 65th minute. And at this point, I didn't really know what to expect. I mean, we had been all over them. We just hadn't found them goals to actually uh, get us uh, ahead, further ahead in the game than we should be. I mean, because as I said, we should have been 5 or 6 nil up by this point. Uh, Vidal then plays the ball to Piaz on here in the 69th minute. He has a shot, and that is again saved. Shot from too far out, to be honest, for that to go in. I guess it was, I, just, I think it was one of the things where I was just like, oh, it's worth a risk because I didn't really know what else to do. Uh, pardon me. Uh, Vidal then gets the ball here, has a shot, and then that is tipped onto the post, but luckily it falls uh, to Benzia there, and Benzia slots that home to make it 2 1 and put us back in the lead. And uh, Benzia has just been crazy this season. I mean, like, don't you don't think it's strange how, like, last season I was saying to you guys how um, I was kind of disappointed in him and I probably would sell him. Uh, because he just hadn't been playing very well at all. And I was playing Dementes instead of him. Uh, because Dementes is a very young player. And he looks like he's going to have a lot of potential in the future. Uh, but this season, Benzi has just been crazy. I think he's scored like uh, 13, 14 goals for me so far this season. And he's grown dramatically. And he's now with like £9 million. So it's, luckily I didn't sell him really. Because he turned into a great player for us. It's a shame because Dementes has been uh, kind of uh, outclassed by him at this moment in time. And, ben and like Dementes does deserve to be played. But just hasn't been to, I, mean, I haven't really been able to slot him into the team really. Um, I just saw that Wigan equalised against us, but straight away I went back and scored. Redmond picking up another goal uh, in this game and made it 3-2. Just luckily getting to the ball before the goalkeeper did. And uh, we're now moving to the 89th minute now. And uh, you see Jufre with it again down the right-hand side. Puts a cross in. It's uh, headed out, but it goes full straight to McCarthy. McCarthy then plays a nice ball in. And uh, that is then slotted home by Orsula in the 90th minute. And uh, that's a typical crew mode for us. Uh, screwing us over in the 90th minute. A typical FIFA. What can you do? But with that game actually ended uh, free all pretty, pretty disappointing results, to be honest. especially with the form that we had going into this game, especially going against Wigan as well. It's a team that you would definitely expect to beat, but unfortunately we didn't, and uh, that game finished free all. Uh, regardless of that, I mean, we, can't, we still get a point. At least we haven't lost. Um, we're going to look at the league table now to see what kind of effect that's had on us and our position in the table. You see we now drop down to fourth. Uh, we're still very close uh, to third and second. We're doing rid ridiculously well, to be honest. I mean, to, for us, as our team with our squad, uh, to be sitting where we are in the league is crazy. We're going to actually sit in there in 13th. Um, it's a pretty poor result, to be fair. 
Get some more offers here. Uh, Anthony Smith, uh, or Stephen is wanting Anthony Smith on loan. Anthony Smith is a player that has come through our youth system. I'm hoping that I can turn some of these youth players actually into real good players that can even get into my team, or maybe just players that I can actually sell on for a nice, tidy profit. Um, again, we're going to look at another transfer offer here for Nathan Ake. Now, he's actually from Valencia. He's valued at 6 million, which I was actually surprised by. Uh, he's actually really starting to come into his own and improve now. He's played in that CDM position. So Valencia wanted him, but uh, I obviously rejected that because that was under the actual valuation of him. And as I said, I'm not willing to sell any of my players that are in the current squad because the current squad is performing way too well for me to bother selling them. Like some of you guys are saying, oh yeah, you should just uh, sell Vidal for like 60, 50, 60 million. And just, I should have like counter offered that, um, what Ramjid offered me. But just no, because I'm not going to find a good enough replacement. Even with that 60 million pounds, I don't think I'll find a good enough replacement for him. And as I said, and he's, a, he's kind of like a stake. I can't, I can't tell you the word. State, I can't even think of the word I'm looking for, like a staple, uh, no, state code, no, can't think of the word, but he's just like a big part of this series, um, it gives me an S, the word I'm looking for. I've got a drop off there from Barcelona, which is crazy to think, uh, they actually want me to uh, manage their teams, it shows how well we're actually doing, we're definitely overachieving with the team we've got. Now going to our next game here against Chelsea, and you can see their team has kind of changed quite a bit this time, uh, still got checking goal, they've still got a couple of their like uh, normal players there. I think it's I got O'Hara. I think that's Jamie O'Hara. If that's a new O'Hara there, but obviously Chelsea are sitting in first, and uh, we played them previously in the cup, and they, I think they did us over four-one. Uh, so definitely going to be a very difficult game for us to go up against. Uh, but here we see uh, Piazza with the ball. Uh, obviously Piazza being an ex-Chelsea player, and, but so is Nathan Ake as well. Uh, and a great play there by Piazza puts Benzia through, and Benzia then gets around the goalkeeper and scores there. So a great uh, all-round goal, especially with that Piazza run there that got him past that like, two or three players. And as, as again Benzia uh, showing. His worth. He's a good thing playing him. You remember in like the first or second season, I uh, moved Andy Keo, who was our striker at the time. I moved into the centre attacking mid because I had too many strikers, and it really worked out to be very effective. The same thing's happening in this formation I've got here. But where I've got Vidal and Piazza up front, I've got two very pacey up fronters. But then I have Benzia, who is also a striker, and playing him as centre attacking mid because he can play there. Um, and he really is really effective there because he seems to always pick up all the loose pieces that there are. He obviously has that attacking position trait. And whenever there's like a loose ball, he's always there to score it, or he's always there just to get in the like he gets in the box if uh, Vidal or uh, I need to talk about this moment actually. Did you see that? Um, so De Bruyne or whatever, whatever his name is, uh, put the ball in for a cross there, and uh, Jed Steer comes out to catch it, and uh, it looks like their player headers it wrong. Jed Steer comes out and actually punches it into his own goal. Um, so I instantly punished him for that. I was like, what? The hell, you let him three goals in the previous game, and now you're going to come in uh, to replace Cragno and do that? No, you're off the pitch, mate. And exactly what I did, and I took him off, and I brought on Cragno. Now, we're like going back with the old reliable Cragno. Um, obviously, that's not going to be something that's going to happen the whole time. Uh, but for that mistake, he deserves to be taken off of the pitch. Um, straight away, I put a ball over the top to Piazon from that kick centre. And I actually won a penalty. I don't really know how. I don't really know where the foul was. But obviously, I'm not going to complain. And as Piazon won that penalty, I let Piazon step up and take that. And he uh, banged it against the crossbar. It looked like it was going to go in off the crossbar. But actually, it uh, looked like it, ba uh, it eventually bounced on the line. And he actually missed the penalty. So it's very disappointing. Uh, Vidal with the ball here. Plays it across to Bittencourt. Bittencourt then turns. And then plays the ball to Piazon. Piazon then turns again and uh, hits the post. That's the second time he's hit the woodwork in this game. Probably in a space of like five minutes as well. That penalty and then that shot there. And then he wins the header there from that corner, uh, but that would go straight into the arms of Czech there. Uh, Vidal with the ball here in the second half, uh, tries to get past the defenders, uh, slots in through the two of their gap between those two players there and hits the crossbar, so again hitting the woodwork, our team there. Uh, Oscar with the ball here, uh, on Chelsea on the counter-attack, plays it to Belfort, who then crosses it to Fernando Torres. That is then saved by Cragno, but it is picked up uh, by Ramirez, who slots it in to get the rebounded goal there and put Chelsea 2-1 ahead. And at this point, I was playing catch-up. I had to try and find a way to get a goal back. And uh, to be fair, I mean, Chelsea were the stronger side. Uh, see, uh, Vidal with the ball here has a shot, but then that is then saved by Czech. Again, I went for the far post. Probably should have gone for the near post. Um, Red with the ball here in the 73rd minute, using his pace, cuts inside. Uh, and then plays a cross over to uh, Vidal there, that is then saved, and I think that was also ruled off for offside as well. Vidal again with the ball here, uh, messes about with it, uh, then it's cleared, Ake headers it down to Piazon who then turns and then uh, shoots and it goes in at near post uh, to make it 2 all in the 90th minute. So that's a great recovery there and obviously Piazon scoring against his old team there which is always good to see. 
Especially if he's going to score us a goal that's going to get us uh, back in the game and get us a point, or we probably wasn't going to get a point at all. Uh, so I'm very happy with that result. Two all, uh, drawing against the league leaders, and uh, again, we're keeping that kind of, we're kind of not losing, and that's the kind of only thing that matters right now is the fact that we just continue playing and we don't lose and keep up that form that we actually have got so far. We're now going to have another quick look at the league table, see how that game then affected our league position. And you can see we're now sitting in fourth steal, same as last time. Uh, uh, Main United Man City joint on points down 49. Chelsea running away with 53 points. Uh, Liverpool just behind us on 45. And you can see Norwich are now dropped down to eight. So they're kind of, uh, they're kind of a great start to the season. It's slowly starting to slack off as, as I kind of expected would happen. Uh, just kind of bit, it's kind of bit too, too good to be true. And apparently, I, well, not apparently, I'm assuming that Jed Steele was actually kind of the uh, reason why they was doing so well. That's why I kind of signed him in the first place. Uh, so we have to see how good this Jed Steer really is. I mean, he disappointed me there against Chelsea and I punished him for it. But hopefully he can be good for us in the near future. Uh, but thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, please leave a like. If you want to check out my Minecraft series that I did recently with uh, KSI, Vicstar and uh, Toby, then you click on the left-hand side of the screen. And if you want to check, uh, check out my second channel, then there's a link on the right-hand screen as always. And I shall see you guys soon. Goodbye.